guys, welcome back. Today we are going to go through patterns of inheritance exam questions and I'm going to show you from start to finish how to think, approach and answer the questions to maximise the amount of marks you get. So let's begin. This topic is so good, it's great, because it links so many other topics together and it's almost like you're revising many in one, you know? <laughs> so here we have a six marker. It links to the cell division topic, which is fantastic. Um, yes, I thought it would be a good idea to go through this one because there's a lot to be said here and some people might be confused of how should I be approaching this? I'll show you. So when it comes to six markers, my philosophy is that I will read all the information. So I'm going to start from... Uh, I say I'll start from the question, then move upwards. So it says, explain how sexual reproduction in Hydra leads to genetic variation of offspring. And let's rephrase this. How does sexual reproduction lead to genetic variation? That's it. Now I'm going to read the information. So it says mitosis and meiosis is important. Fantastic, we already know that. Um, says that Hydra is a small animal. Okay. Now this is where I think they're very interesting. So it said... When conditions are not favourable, the, the hydro reproduces sexually, and this often happens in winter. Okay. And then it says, cells in the body wall produce sperms and eggs by meiosis. So they produce both of them, both sperm and egg, which is uncommon, isn't it? Then it says, you know, large number numbers of sperm are released into the water. Huh. So they're releasing it. So that means any individual can fertilise it. Okay. Do you see where I'm going with this? Genetic variation. Okay. Next thing says each egg forms a tough outer coat and can lie dormant at the bottom of the water until conditions improve. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So how does sexual reproduction not asexual, we are talking about sexual reproduction, lead to genetic variation. So much, so much can be said, okay? Let's break it up. What is genetic variation? I always, always, always love to describe the definition or explain the definition. So here, the definition I want to describe is genetic variation. So I'm going to say how, you know, genetic variation is the variety of alleles. Then I'm going to be like, you know, uh, there's random fertilisation. Then I'm also going to be like, um, offsprings have alleles from more than one parent. I could also say how, you know, meiosis produces genetically unique gametes. That point always comes up, okay? So when I, uh, when I write up the answer, <laughs> you'll know which one always comes up. But what I did there was describe what genetic variation is. But also, what sexual reproduction is as well, is a two-in-one, okay? Always define your terms, especially, especially when it's patterns of inheritance, okay? Now, it says, explain how. What does how mean? How is like an instruction? It's like, so how does this happen, you know? So that's when you get into the specifics of meiosis. Of course, you know that um, meiosis produces unique gametes. Why is that? Tab into it. So we have crossing over, that happens in the prophase one. Alleles swap between non-sister chromatids, that's another point. You know, we can also say about um, independent assortment in metaphase one. We could also say in metaphase two, um, crossing over can occur. So what I did there was number one, I defined what genetic variation is and sexual reproduction. And then I said, what actually, actually happens in sexual reproduction, aka meiosis. So then from here, what you can do is talk about the specifics that are actually written. So right now we, we spoke about ge like uh, generically. But of course, the main focus of the question is Hydra, and they don't add information in a six marker if they don't want you to use it, okay? 
Six Marker 101. Everything that's written as context and as information, the examiners want you to use it. So do it. <laughs> okay, so now that we can get specific, let's read again what it said about the Hydra. It said that it reproduces when conditions are not favourable, that's fine. But actually, the fact that, you know, the cell body produces sperm and egg, and the fact, the main, main fact that, you know, the sperms are released in water, aka meaning anybody can fertilise it. Okay, so that's quite, that's honestly really fascinating when you think about it, but we're not here for fascination. Uh, the point you're going to say about Hydra now is, you know, the sperm from one Hydra can be fertilised, can fertilise an egg from another Hydra, okay? Two Hydra um, can have different alleles, aka genetic variation. Um, you can also say that this is a quite uh, unique I don't know whether you would think in this way, but when it comes to um, animals and water and genetic variation and meiosis and whatever, you always like to talk about the water point, how, you know, in water, things travel far and large distances. So here, you link it to the fact that sperm is carried in water and might travel large distances. So that means, honestly, um, a hydro could be fertilising it in... Ugh, I don't know, like, 1,000 metres away from where the location of where it was dropped, not dropped, <laughs> released from in the ocean. So that means that, you know, there's more genetic variation because there's more different types of hydro. So that's how you do the question, really. There's three parts. Again, let me reiterate this. One, define genetic variation and sexual reproduction. Two, Explain how meiosis occurs. And three, link it back to the question and say uh, specifically about points that the hydra, uh, like the actions do, I guess. Like, what do they do that causes genetic variation, aka talk about the information that was written in the question. So let me write this up. Okay, last question says, suggest why sexual reproduction in hydra usually occurs in the winter. Okay, the answer is always going to be the same, okay? So, in winter, of course, there's unfavourable conditions. Let's, let's be honest, a hydra doesn't want to be producing offspring in snowy conditions or in really cold conditions because then, then the offspring aren't going to survive. Some might, but others won't. And so the answer here would just be that some offspring might survive the unfavourable conditions. Unfavourable or favourable conditions is two words that you need to um, write down in your notes because that's the sort of thing or sort of answer that the mark scheme wants for um, like biodiversity, um, ecology, patterns of inheritance, meiosis, cell division, topic questions. So yeah, that's how you do that. Okay, and that's the end of today's episode. Remember, the two most important exam technique tips are read the question first and state all the obvious points. Now over to you. Try some questions and let me know how it goes.